Welcome to the Derwood Experience, where we talk seriously about whatever we want. Yeah, and baby. I thought we'd bring back the old intro, because we haven't done it for a long time. Surprised you guys haven't been flipping out about it, or you just came to peace with, like, it's different all the time with me. It only took a year <laughs> for me to come to peace. <laughs> I, had a... I, can get, I can get there. I kind of like the little shift, the little mix-up. We had a we had a fun little get together for work uh, last week about words matter, and um, the ad hoc icebreaker was for everyone to tell everybody else what their pet peeve phrase or word is which to me was a terrible idea. Exact. That's exactly. I'm on your page, Steve. I'm on your page. I'm like, I that's, and that, I even said that to everybody. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you what my pet peeves are. So you can't use it against me, but I appreciate all this information that I can now say to you guys all the time. Nice. <laughs> no, you're horrible. I had a friend that he, what is your pet peeve? I'm not going to use it against you. I just want to know what it is. Who? Who are you talking to? I don't really have one. You. You just said, I'm not going to tell you what my pet peeve is. And I'm right. like, well, what is it? Yeah, Can you exactly. tell me now? No. <laughs> I'm <laughs> disappointed. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, that doesn't work on me. Nice try, though. <laughs> you were going to say your friend? He, um... He was very upset about the 2000 uh, election that happened between Bush and Gore, right? And it was odd for those of you that remember, right? Only one other time, at least what I remember is that there had only been one other time where a president had lost the, had won the popular vote, but lost the electoral vote, which has now happened a couple times. It's happened one more time since then. Um, it was also weird that Florida was the state that was involved in that the previous time. So there were some, I'm not saying there were shenanigans going on, but there were shenanigans going on. And he was super upset about it. So I, my job as his friend was to bring that up as often as I could. I just cared. I wanted to help him work through that. And finally, one day I broke him. We were in a car going to lunch and I made a joke about it again. And he, he did, he was like, you know, he's like, I actually do want to thank you because that used to bother me a lot, that whole thing. But because you have been saying it so much, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> What's that called? That's awesome. There has to be some psychological, like name for what you're doing. Oh, for me, I just call it being an ass. <laughs> <laughs> really because me i call it being an ethan <laughs> yeah right yeah all these years you didn't even know There's so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my pet peeve by the way this is my pet peeve and i'm thinking maybe both of you say this word but it drives me crazy because this word while it existed in the english vocabulary and the dictionary for years it has suddenly become the buzzword of like the last five years. And it drives me nuts because people use it all the time. I can think I, I know what it is. Can I guess? Yeah, let's guess. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. I'm gonna go with irregardless. Ooh. No, no, okay. it's a business term that people use where you've got to, you've right, got go to Jess. react. No, let, let Jess do it. Go ahead, Jess. I was gonna say like when someone says like, honestly, or like to, to be honest, Oh, yeah, honestly drives me crazy, too. Or like, or when people say literally, I literally, and it's like, no, that you wasn't literally, but whatever. No, it's or, a business term. It's pivot. Oh, Everybody oh uses goodness. pivot, and it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> that does? Oh, that's funny. Yes, yep, a little part of me dies every time someone says pivot. <laughs> Like, and it's just like used it used anytime you're like, oh, well, we just need to, you know, kind of change how we're going to do that. Instead, it's, well, we need to pivot. And I just sort of throw up in my mouth every time. So, it comes from, it's because of Excel and the pivot tables. 
Or is it from Friends? And Ross and Chandler are trying to get the... <laughs> oh my gosh, I freaking love that dude. That scene is so funny. And all Pivot! He... Pivot! <laughs> I think it's from that. <laughs> I was watching a... There's a TikToker that I follow and she... I, she was mouthing off about something else and in her she had stitched another video and in her response she said she said pivot like pivot like uh ross did and i just loved i started laughing hysterically when she said that and then all the comments were i was dead at pivot i'm like yeah we all were because we're all the same age and love that show sure So you don't have anything that uh, is a pet peeve? Not really. Um, no, I, what's really funny is <laughs> the other things that you said, honestly and literally, those were two of the most common ones that were brought up when we had this Oh, meeting. really? Yeah, uh, lots of stuff like that. Which, it's, it's really funny too because nobody ever talks about that. Um, and... It's funny how everybody appeared to have one they were super passionate, super passionate about. Just like you, like I really want to tell everybody, pivot's the dumbest word ever. Don't you know? I'm not saying it's the dumbest word ever. I'm saying it's overused. It's yeah. it's become like that would never be a word I would use very often in conversation. But no, it has come to be the word used when anybody wants to say change or oh we need to reverse course whoa we were wrong on this we need to go to instead it's well we need to pivot and it's and i really firmly believe it's intended to make someone sound really business savvy and it just it's i just sort of rolled my eyes maybe it's i mean it could just be like I, one of the funniest ones to me is who has the D right that I can't remember which company it was, but what? yeah, who has the D what's that? That's short for who has the decision, which is a completely valid question that okay. people don't, people who don't work in corporations at with mm -hmm. executive leadership don't understand how often you actually have to ask who is the decision maker for this thing. So um, I laughed hysterically because nobody in this group of dudes at this company ever thought who has the D meant anything other than who has the decision and didn't understand how that would be perceived by employees or female employees. They were, it was just completely lost on them. And I, so I remember reading this article and I'm like, I know exactly what they're saying, but yeah, I've never heard anyone actually say that. But I knew exactly what they meant when they said it. Who has the D? Get out of here, you freaking dopes. I would have immediately screamed. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have raised my hand and I would have been like, I have the D. Yeah, I just it's just funny that all these dudes just sitting around like, who has the D? Who has the D? Who has it? And it's they're not making a joke. They're not trying oh, to be a D bag about it. And then they say it and someone's like, yeah, that's super offensive. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, they're just in their own world. Yeah. I, the number of times also uh, that you have to remind for-profit companies that they're for-profit companies is mind boggling. I don't know. I mean, many times I've been in the room and someone is like, hey, we're running a business. We're trying to make money. Yep. Yeah never brought up well let's see so with nonprofits, they're all about doing things for their people but they're super mean to each other that's the weirdest thing hmm. are we generalizing yeah 100 percent. that's mm -hmm. how we do it <laughs> i can i could be specifying on the following you talked about um we're here to make a profit. That comment was made recently within a business context. I don't need to go any further. 
Uh, someone made the comment about uh, a team that is a very high functioning team that is recognized across the organization. Like that team is working really well. I want to be on that team. And someone said about that team of which I'm a part and we do kind of fun things that don't take much time, but we have fun things that kind of bond everybody together. And somebody made the comment, hey, I thought I thought we were here to make money, not be doing, you know, this fun stuff. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I've only, I've only ever, it's only ever been used in my experience when I've been around. It's only ever been used to help remind people why we're prioritizing the things that we are. It's never have, I've never seen it used in a way to do that, to squash any kind of team cohesiveness or culture or synergy, if you will. Yep. That's a great word that got wore out in the early 2000s. Yeah, I, I think the person who said that really needs to pivot their thinking. <laughs> pivot. Yes, they do. You can only type it P I V A T though. Pivot. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, that's the thing that I think is funny too, because I believe that org is a nonprofit. Which don't get me wrong, a business is a business. They're trying to make money. Yes. Yep. But it's a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's just funny. I know, right? Right. It's weird. What's one BAU? I had somebody say BAU one time. I love BAU. That's my favorite word. BAU? Well, yeah. So they were like, this is, they were. Totally BAU. Yeah. We were talking to, we were talking to this person and they were like, well, is I this guess. this as usual? Yeah, that's what they said. And it was funny because okay. the, the other guy that I was with, he he called him out. He's like, you're just going to throw that around like that's something everybody says because nobody says that. I used to say it all the time. And then I stopped because someone called me out and was like, what does that even mean? You're acting as though everyone knows what that means. And I'm like, you don't know what it means. <laughs> that's your fault. <laughs> Were you at the store when you said that? No, no okay. I was right. Somewhere else in my the beginning of my career, but I was oh. on the business side, and so yeah. that language I think was more common on the business side than the IT side. Did you? Uh, I was at a place where they liked to speak almost exclusively in acronyms uh, to the point where we were at that place, not at the same time, but we've both been to that place. And uh, to the point where I think we had to make a document with all the different acronyms so that newbie was like part of onboarding. Yeah. My favorite though, is when you first start somewhere, you have no clue to what anyone's saying. And then about three to four weeks into it, you have a sentence of all acronyms and you knew what it meant and you pause and you're like, oh my gosh, I just did it. I did it. And I like make a big deal out of it. I think it's a fun win. <laughs> you know, I heard um, so I don't, I don't have any reason to think that I'm autistic or on the spectrum at all. Like, let me just say that first, but I saw a video of someone who was, they are autistic and they were explaining one of the reasons that some people with autism have difficulty communicating with one another or with other people is because they take the words literally, whereas, um, most people, when they speak they are using the words in a cultural way. Like there's inferences right. with words, yeah. Right. Which I was like, hmm. Um, yeah, I can totally see that. I remember with one person, we talked, we were saying the same word back and forth to one another. But I was, I was like, they're not, they don't mean the same thing I do. Like, but they're saying, and I say the word and they're like, yes. But then when I asked them follow up questions, we're not agreeing. What about word? That. I can't remember what it was. It was so oh, stupid okay. though. That's how important <laughs> that's how important it was. <laughs> and so I've you know yeah, I can see that uh BAU those types of things I could see they're I think they appear to be kind of cultural, just like you said, like 
after a little while, then you begin speaking that kind of language. And it's a different one because you take them when you first come in, you take them literally because you have no context as to what they mean. Mm -hmm. Like BAU. Wow. I've never heard that ever. I've never heard anybody say that since then. I've only heard it one time that one dude said it. Nobody ever said it again. I want to bring it back. Let's bring it back. <laughs> you can't. You're showing your age. I've, a new term, new term I've learned today, corporate millennial. Corporate that, huh. Yeah, I, huh. I feel like that one stung a little bit. What does that mean? Just not us? The joke was from this person, Slack is AOL Instant Messenger for corporate millennials. And I was like, that's a nice dig, I think, at Slack, because I do think Slack sucks now. Um, also hurt my feelings a little bit being a corporate millennial, I think. Hmm. Are we? No, we are not corporate millennials. Mm -hmm. It depends. Yeah. yeah, we're we're on the cusp. So we're like in between the bulk of Gen Z and millennial. Yeah. And so it depends on which like which thing you look for. But in general, 1980, you know, those 1975 to 1985 were in the middle. And so Xennial is mm -hmm. like a more appropriate term those people that had a, an analog childhood and a digital adulthood hmm. but yes i've always 1980 to 2000 when of this 2000 is when the zoomers something like that i don't know 2002 <laughs> maybe i want to go back to something you said and this is not intended as any reference to you, but you said, I don't think I am consider myself on the spectrum. The whole concept of being on the spectrum, I've had this working theory that I have only thought about when I'm like two or three beers in, and then I don't think about it beyond that, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. That everyone to some degree is on the spectrum somewhere about something. Yeah, I think Thoughts? um I like that. So even um something I'm really familiar with, which is the OI, um, when our daughter was first diagnosed with that, there were four main types, type one, two, three, and four. So it's and oddly enough, three is worse than four. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> so there were four main types and she was type one. But as we have as things have changed over the last like decade or so, we've gotten more information about it. And so now they view the whole thing as a spectrum, but within each of those types, they also view that as, an, as, an, as a spectrum. Because we have our daughter as type one, and we have a number of friends who are also type one, or their kids are type one, but the experiences and the fracture rates are wildly different. Um, our daughter's fracture rate high, for like normal kids so higher than anybody else would normally experience in their life um, but significantly lower than some of our others friends kids even though they're technically the same type so even within that same type there's a spectrum but yeah i think in general steve everybody's finally recognizing in medicine and mental health that like it's not just one size fits all as we get more information about all this stuff <laughs> I agree. I mean, there's probably something. I have some form of OCD, ADHD, something. I don't know what it is. I know I'm dyslexic, um, so I have a learning disorder. I don't know if that would be considered spectrum. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. So I'm glad you brought that up, the whole dyslexia thing. I, I feel like it's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next year. But at some point, it might be 50 years from now, 100 years from now, there's going to be some discovery about dyslexia actually is this. And it's going to be like this mind blowing thing that's <laughs> going to come about. I, I seriously think that's got to happen. <laughs> I'm like the smartest person on earth. <laughs> um, oh, or it's something like only dyslexic people can solve this particular puzzle. Problem. Yeah. Let me, so let me, this is one way I have heard 
uh, people explain potentially dyslexia or like, you know, anyway, um, they think in three dimensions, which is why the letters and the numbers get jumbled up Could because be. it's not and two dimension. And there's going to be like think tanks somewhere that are looking for people and they're like, we're looking for someone dyslexic to join our team because we need sure. that that facet absolutely like honestly the reason why i'm good at my job is because i think backwards and i think outside of the normal chronological i'm always thinking like what about over here what about over here and then we need to start from the end and work our way this way and i just i always think differently and so that's why i'm able to um like see things uh, that other people can't see. Can I blow your mind for a minute? Mm. Yes, please. My perception is you think linearly. Linearly. You you do think I think that way? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I can see it going backwards though, and that's still linear. It, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Hmm. Well. You got a time limit tonight, Steve? Nope. Okay. Nope. I was just saying hello to the spouse who came home from work. Hi. <laughs> What's an outside the box thing that you think? And one of my favorite, this is from the Big Bang Theory, one of my favorite. Um, I think they said they're talking about anything can happen Thursday and someone had said we need to think outside the box and Sheldon's like we should do this because it's not our normal night to do it and Leonard's response was way to be outside the box yet pressed right up against it <laughs> like my favorite line <laughs> right up against it. that's funny <laughs> What was the original question? What's outside the box? <laughs> um, I think I think outside the box, and I'm thinking about this, and I always come back to like in business because the three of us have a common thread of the same business. Um, you guys work at a why, hostel too? Holy cow! What's the why? Name? Yeah. Why is there like a, this blueprint? Typically, there are exceptions. One of you is present. Why is there this blueprint for management? Because it's management, not leadership. Why don't we think outside the box and go? And this comes back to a previous episode where we talked about the informal network. Mm -hmm. Is there like a leader of the informal network that where you go, that person actually really leads and should be in this more formal role? Yeah, all the time. That's usually what the head of the informal network is. Mm -hmm. So why do we fall? And I use the term we like universally. Why do yeah. we fall into the... Well, this is the way we've always selected our managers and this is what we're going to do and this is the same thing because if we do something radical it will be perceived as dumb i think it's because people don't actually know what a leader is what the qualities are or how they should work and if you look at my guess is you can count on one hand the number of good leaders that you've interacted with in your life. But you've worked with dozens, if not hundreds of people that have had manager in their title or are a manager of some. How cool would it be if people within like organizations could title someone as either a leader or manager like 
you have to get voted in as the leader. Like granted, you can be given the title of manager. Like that's because that's been appointed to you by whoever, but then it's the people who identify the leaders and they appoint the leaders within the group. Manager is top down, leader is bottom up. Yeah. Do, it happens already. It's just people don't, they don't know what to look for. So they don't see it. If you think of the place we were at, not this time, but the last time, there is a person who had a double letter name who was a manager, right? <laughs> but then there was, but there were other people that were looked at that. <laughs> you, right. You picking up what I'm putting down, Steve? Is that from your yep. era? <laughs> yep. Unraveling the Jive mystery. Turkey, I got it. Whatever. Uh, I, I hear, I hear you clucking, big chicken. Yes. <laughs> to quote. My close personal friend, Mr. Eric T. Shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, it's um, and that previous place that we were at. I think one of the reasons it, the su success we had was slow. I mean, it took a long time, but it's like we were the recipient of years of garbage removal, and we had a number. We had three good leaders that were brought in that we got to work directly with, which is why we were able to make changes. We weren't, you know, we did start there with someone who was a manager and then it changed to someone who was a leader. Steve, you did not get the pleasure to work with both of them, but <laughs> just the, just the one. So yes, I did not have the previous one, but I had the current one who yeah. I think is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and Here's how awesome I think that person is. And Jess, I'm sorry I interrupted you and we'll, so we'll come to you in a second. But I think that person is so awesome that I'm shocked he was hired. Does that make sense? Like- I know 100% agree, 100% agree. Like he's so good. How did you figure it out? That, that It's not just that company. It's like, how did any company figure that out? Anyway, sorry, Jess, go ahead. I can't remember what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I it's, blew it. It seemed like you're going to ask a question. Something about leadership. I can't remember. I still like my idea of people appointing leaders. Oh, I, I yeah. I'm just saying it happens now. But like how... <laughs> How do you know if you are the one appointed the leader? Like you would just know because people naturally come to you and I don't know. It's a good question. Yes, I think you'd know. Or you could just have a really big ego and think I'm the best leader out there and everyone comes to me. <laughs> it's totally fine to think that some days, as long as you balance it out with the next day and you alternate between this, I'm the worst <laughs> ever. Like, as, if you're doing that, you're good. If you're only thinking that you're great, you're probably not very great. You're probably not that, very good. That falls under the category of you're delusional and you have no right. idea what's going <laughs> right. on around you. Yes. If you don't have, I, I completely agree with that 100%. I think you articulated that perfectly. Yeah, some days you're, you're like, I'm killing it. And then other days you're like, I'm the worst. I hope they don't fire me. <laughs> yep. I completely STB that thing. <laughs> Do you know what that is? No, is T like the middle initial for your name or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> Shit the bed. Oh. <laughs> That's fun. That's funny. I like that. It's it's like the viscosity thing. I I think I've told you about that. <laughs> like yes, I feel like yes. we should. Okay, uh, we gotta come back to this because you've talked about the viscosity thing, but I don't think I haven't grasped exactly how you intended, and I need the explanation. So please, 
enlighten the rest of us, enlighten me, preferably. What what does the rating mean? How does it figure into things? Please. So the viscosity is to give a a feeling of how like how sticky the work confident? is. Confident? No, it's not confidence. More like potential landmines maybe. Um cuz it's very rare like we're not we're not coming up with work and then saying we're not confident in our approach or we don't know exactly what it is. It's more like um if you have a bunch that are size small, it's a low viscosity. Everything's going to flow very easily. But if you have like a couple big ones or one big one, then it's like you have this potential sticking point. Gotcha. You've already identified it as being a lot of work. You're just not sure if it's a lesser amount of a lot of work or a greater amount of a lot of work. Yeah. It's, okay. I think it it's like it complements kind of the estimate right the estimate is very abstract which is like a big thing that people still can't do to this day but it's just like to help i just love it because it's like our little inside joke but like i put it out there and like would explain it and report on it like it's a thing but nobody has any clue what it is so even because i'm so i'm leaving and then um the person that's still going to be there that's going to do that we walk through how to get that number for viscosity um, and how to put it, make sure he puts it in the, the report. Do you have a page. formula? No, I use the all, the great all powerful Goog for that. So yeah, we, we, mm -hmm. we do is we pull. So Jess, I don't think I've told you, but um, we came up with this thing called viscosity. Yeah. For, yeah, our, for our iterations or so sprints. velocity and what's what is what are you blending it with we're not it's a different thing so it's a okay. viscous viscosity and we use viscosity is a real thing and it's measured in the unit of poise but poise is a very big number so you have to use centipoise so that it's easier to understand right because air is like zero and olive oil is like 100 centipoise, which is point two. I need a diagram. I need a diagram. Yeah. <laughs> and so we Pictures. do, Pictures. we do our planning. We do our planning, and then we have like a real brief conversation about what we think the viscosity of the sprint is. And I let the team just comes to an agreement of what, what kind of thing they want to equate it to we've had olive oil we've had motor oil chocolate syrup um and then i go find a number for that and then i i don't explain i just say <laughs> viscosity and the number with the unit so one we had was like two ago was chocolate syrup which is between ten thousand and fifteen thousand centipoise and so i just picked like twelve hundred twelve thousand eight hundred thirty four <laughs> so it's just on the thing it's just viscosity 12,834 cp <laughs> okay no has anyone asked you about it no yeah. or is everyone too embarrassed to go i don't want to admit that i don't know that no nobody has asked and i did run it i did tell steve and one of the other people that we work with and they liked it Mm -hmm. How long like have you been doing this for? Mm, <laughs> two months now, I think. Okay. But but if you look back and compared them all against each other, is there a pattern where you could go, oh yeah, clearly in this one, it had a higher viscosity than this yeah, one. Yeah, hundred percent. And here's why. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and could you chart that and not have to explain it? Mm. What do you mean chart it? Like, like so if you presented the data and put it in a form, could Jess or myself look at it and go, oh, clearly in 
sprint 75 you were not sure about your your estimates no that's not what viscosity is not sure about um whatever could, it is you're trying I could to explain. definitely chart it i'm an idiot i should sure. be in management it would it would be it would be a crazy chart though right because one sprint was like olive oil it's like a hundred maybe a thousand but right, then the next sprint, to, the next sprint was explain. chocolate syrup, which was twelve thousand. <laughs> right, so you'd have to explain the olive oil chocolate syrup thing. So you can't just present a graph or a chart or a table of data and somebody could figure I would, it out. I would one hundred percent. I would do that. I would one hundred percent do that. I would, I would one hundred percent pretend that it's a thing. I don't even know that I would, maybe I would label it viscosity, but I would just, I would 100, would do that and then present it just to mess with people, just to be like, this is a normal thing and see who asks any questions about it. I need to pivot my thinking because this is just like <laughs> over the top. I love that though. It makes it fun. It makes people like think differently and out of the it box. Does. That's an out, out of the box, box thinking. It is it's completely out of the box. It's a Viscosity. fun thing too, right? For the because now it's like okay, like we've done our boring number Fibonacci million thing, like that I've done for a decade or whatever number for your estimate. Like now let's talk about different liquids <laughs> and <laughs> and what the viscosity is and how that relates to the work that we're doing. <laughs> how did you even come up with the word viscosity? Like, were you reading or were you gaming one night and someone said it? And you're like, that's a great word. I'm going to start using that. No, it was... It's uh, a motor oil thing. Yeah. Our tech lead had said that they they had used the word and they were like, I want to I wanna try and describe it this way. Like, when I think of it, I'm like, yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> it's, it's not a you thing anymore. Yeah, really? <laughs> Oh, that's if funny. you think about the viscosity of the motor oil in your car in winter versus summer, it's the same chemical, the same liquid, but it has a different viscosity depending on the time time of year or specifically depending on the temperature. So thickness of a liquid is viscosity. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's actually a real world word. We had we actually had this very discussion, Steve, yesterday in our planning meeting about whether or not we needed to take temperature into account for the value. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> and the not reason I the, said not the in the I case you're talking about, but, but in general, no. Like so the motor the oil that you use, it's a two it's two numbers, like five W thirty. Right. So what that means is that when it's cold, the oil behaves as five weight. And then as it heats up, then it behaves as a 30 weight. So that's not like the viscosity. That's something else that the oil's doing that has been engineered into it. If you put just straight 30, 30 weight in there, it will behave as a 30 weight all the time up where we live, where it's cold the engine will have a difficult time at the lower temperatures with a higher weight oil that it needs to protect when it's warm, right? You want it to be thick. At a high this temperature. is so educational. <laughs> I'd be learning lots of stuff today. <laughs> and hopefully both of our listeners will get this as well <laughs> it's like it's like doubled you guys we're like high single digits now wow what I'm so proud of us <laughs> it's because we shortened them i know i was just looking at oh the other one came out too uh would you have to go yeah you have to go oh um yeah i'll share it afterwards i'm pull it up um yeah i took a bunch out of this one too this one was heavy editing mm. that i did we were saying a lot of stuff <laughs> in a that times, yeah yeah a couple times ago man we just were i was what so was so what was the 
What was the viscosity of that particular podcast? That was pretty high. Yeah. I'd I'd probably I'd definitely at least chocolate syrup. At least ten thousand centipoids, at least. What's that is it called molasses? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like molasses. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lot. It was a lot of stuff that had to come out, and like making sure things fit. That's the other thing is, what I think is funny is, I don't know that I'd be able to pick out, but it's like I know you guys because you just say the stuff, and that's it. So it's like, <laughs> um, when you hear it, I assume that that's what you think happened. That's not. You, that's not what happened in some cases. I don't do that very often. But <laughs> this next wow. one, you f- like, feel free to like. If you can tell where I've like really cut stuff out, like I spend a lot of time to try and make sure that everything fits when I have to take chunks out. Mm-hmm. So it all sounds like really normal. That would be hard. <clears throat> Thank you for doing that. Yes. Really you. you are the greatest. It's fun. All right, let's see. And I gotta send you this stuff, too. <laughs>